Oh, we definitely all enjoy watching your players. Let's talk <laughs> a little bit about your fullbacks, Trent Alexander-Arnold, who you've mentioned, and Andy Robertson, because not only have they made the position super cool again, I don't know if it ever was cool, but it definitely is at the moment. They also have this way of identifying with the fans, obviously maybe the local thing with Trent Alexander-Arnold, but what is it that has allowed them to do that and have propelled them basically to the top of world football in their position? I think the first thing is their own application. And I suspect if the manager was here, he'd say a willingness to learn and to, to develop. I think Klopp himself has adapted his approach to their strengths and to the what they've shown for one another. I think Liverpool's midfield is often spoken about as though it lacks a certain amount of creativity, but part of what it does is it works so that everybody else can blossom. And I think that's what you've seen. And I think realising that with Trent, you've got this unbelievably gifted footballer, this brilliant passer of the ball, someone who reads the game so well. He's so intelligent, Trent Arnold, both on and off the pitch, let's be frank about that. Uh, and he's committed to the wider cause. And you can say the same thing about, about Robertson as well. Robertson is a he's a tremendous footballer, to be honest with you. And we miss him so much when he isn't there. He didn't play the Merseyside derby against Everton. And, you know, there really was a hole on that left-hand side from a Liverpool point of view. But again, I think it's down to the fact that the manager wants them to, to enjoy the football, to be part of what happens all over the pitch. I know one of his favourite goals this season was the was the Mo Salah uh, header against Manchester City when Trent picks it up on the right, switches it to Robertson on the left. Robertson gets out from under his feet and, and, and puts it right on a plate for Mo Salah to nod home brilliantly. There's also another goal where Trent Alexander-Arnold against Salzburg puts the ball in for Andy Robertson to get on the end of um, uh, in open play, not in a set piece. And I think that's what the manager wants. He sees these fullbacks as part of the part of the whole team. I think he wants fullbacks putting tap-ins to the back of the net from six yards out in the middle of the goal. That's what we're about and, and that's what they embrace. As soon as I were talking about fullbacks, what can you tell us about Stevie Nicol? Because obviously he's the regular fixture with us here on ESPN FC. There's so uh, someone else who I know occasionally does ESPN and does and, and is, is an excellent Liverpool writer, Tony Evans, goes out of his way to compare Steve Nichol to Paolo Maldini and to do so favourably. And it it brings a fair amount of criticism Tony's way. And I think that's in part a story about how we actually view English football from a certain period. And that at that period, overseas football was just frankly, it was more romantic. You didn't get to see those players as often and those sort of names. And this this, you know, this 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 happens to Alan Shearer, it happens to Ian Rush. But another one of those players it happens to is Steve Nichol. Steve Nichol was football of the year from fullback. Uh, Steve Nicholl was an integral part of one of the greatest Liverpool sides ever. Um, he's got a European Cup winner's medal in his back pocket. He's got innumerable league, league winner's medals in his back pocket. And he didn't do that by being a passenger. He did it by being a key part of this team. And he genuinely could be one of the best fullbacks ever. But Tony's comparison is not an unfair one. Um, and Steve Nicholl is exactly the sort of fullback that this Liverpool side is currently showing. The ability of showing the... you know. It, Andy Robertson and Steve Nicol are a really, really nice comparison in exactly the same way that Sadio Mane and John Barnes had a very, very nice comparison point as well. You know, the idea of someone who plays on the left-hand side as a forward and has this full-back behind them who can play like a midfielder, who can join them, who can overlap them and who can score goals. That's exactly what, you know, what Liverpool had back then. And, and it, it's a reminder that a lot of the core values within the game, you know, working hard, reading the game well, knowing when to put your foot in, knowing when to attack, knowing when to defend, they don't go anywhere. Steve Nichol has them, and he would be of all of Liverpool's former players. I mean, in all seriousness, if I could add one of Liverpool's greats to the current squad, you can make an argument it could be Steve Nichol because of his versatility and his ability to get all the way around the pitch. Um, you know, obviously Liverpool have had genuinely great players. I mentioned Barnes, you've got Dark Leash, but Nichol's up there with any of them, and he could do it in four, five, six different positions right the way across the pitch. He was a fabulous footballer, and he was he was great to watch whilst I was little. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube, and for more sports highlights and analysis be sure to download the espn app and for premium content and live streaming subscribe to espn plus